Party 180 continues to operate as expected. <laughs> there you are. Oh, yeah. That's so fucking cool. Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight level. We're now three minutes into flight on the L101 mission. Atlas is now 66 miles in altitude, 125 miles downrange, traveling at 7,500 miles per hour. We're now throttling down in preparation for payload clearing jettison. That's so cool. I can't even see it with my naked eye. There's Miko. Successful payload clearing jettison and successful PFLR load deck jettison. Alice is throttling back up after the separation event. No, there's, wait, no, that's cloud. Oh, I can see the upper stage, or the first stage, too. That's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. That's, that's so cool. Pick up the ISO a little so we can't don't lose it. It's a lower cost alternative to the Dang, that that's sick. So one of the interesting parts or challenging parts of integrating these motors is you have to be able to swap out the SRB and make sure you're not increasing risk to the Atlas launch vehicle. And it's pull out a little system performance requirements. The main thing was setting a really strong requirements foundation. Yeah. And back in we go. That's so good. And unfortunately, because Centaur uses hydrogen and it burns clear, you're not really able to see the plume on the second stage there, the uh, dot on the left. There are some stars, maybe a plane, I can't tell. Dang, that's so cool. And it's so high up as well. Holy cow, it's like probably 45 degrees up. Like that's higher than Antares was. Antares was maybe only 10. You're not really able to see it because I'm moving the camera, but it's moving across the sky. Oh, it's about to pass by Mars. Pull back a little, see if we can get Mars in the shot. There's Mars right at the bottom. With the first stage following closely behind the second stage. Or, yeah. Flying past Mars, that's so cool. Oh, I'm so happy I was able to see it. As a reminder, Mars is staying stationary. It's the other two dots that are moving one into a uh, orbit. The other is going to come down and burn up somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. All right, and there goes Mars. So we're going to zoom back in. It's getting further and further apart as the Centaur continues to power uh, the NRL mission into space. Before we sign off, 
That first stage probably will head into the Earth's shadow in a second or two. So you won't be able to see it. So. Be really Oh, they're cutting off the broadcast, Dorn. Be really cool to see that first stage, like, see it come in. Maybe it'll get some re-entry flares, but I doubt it. Passing by some clouds and some stars. The insane thing about Centaur is, like, I'm up in Pennsylvania, and it's going to continue burning till it goes over the horizon and, like, up past Canada. It's such an efficient engine and just is so amazing to, to use. And it can burn for so long because it's so efficient. You know, you think the first stage there, that burned for three minutes and got them up out of the atmosphere, but the Centaur is going to burn for, like, probably a good eight to ten minutes just to get into the initial orbit then probably another two or three minute burn as well I'm worried about I'm about to lose centaur as it goes into the clouds here I'm also debating what I want to follow I'm gonna pull out just a little just so that we can keep track of both objects. So, again, got a feeling we're going to lose Centaur that heads into these clouds. In fact, actually, looking up now, it's pretty cloudy up there. Got really lucky with the clouds being not so bright, or not in the uh, southern sky, but in the northern sky. Oh, I'm so happy this finally worked. You can just barely see Centaur there. It's heading towards the star at the bottom. Heading now over Lancaster County. Zoom in a little just to see it fly right past. I think that's Centaur. Maybe not. I think we might have lost them.